Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. Uh, so earlier today, I posted a YouTube video. I did a live stream and someone left a comment. Um, and the comment was about David Carroll. They said that David Carroll had passed away. And frankly, this hit me by surprise. You know, I have not been on YouTube. Um, you know, I haven't been regularly watching YouTube videos. So I wasn't aware of this news. Uh, so this was a shock, this was a surprise. And before I even continue with this particular video, I just want to send my condolences to David Carroll's family. You know, may the brother rest in peace. Um, you know, it's just a, a sad situation. And many people know that I had disagreements with David Carroll. You know, we did not see eye to eye on politics or women. Uh, you all know I've had, you know, uh, vigorous debates and, you know, arguments with David Carroll, both on this channel, New Possibilities, and on my I Declare War channel. You know, I opposed many of the political stances that he would take. You know, I opposed his views on black women, I oppose his views on religion as well. Uh, so we had opposition. And despite that opposition, you know, despite that strong opposition that I had towards that brother, um, I did respect his ability to, you know, make arguments. You know, I respected his intellect, even though I vigorously disagreed with his line of reasoning and the conclusions that he raised or reached, uh, I still had great respect for him as, you know, just as an intellectual, as somebody presenting their positions and arguing their points and taking a stand on particular issues. I had respect for that. Like, even though, you know, I took certain positions, you know, strongly opposed a lot of the things that he said, I do believe that he genuinely was concerned about Black people. You know, he did have concern for the plight of black people, even though I disagreed with the language that he would use or uh, the positions that he would take. But, you know, I do have, um, you know, um, respect for his intellect, as I said before. And, you know, his death um, is shocking. And anytime someone passes away, it's cause for reflection. It's, you know, time to reflect on just the meaning of life and about the legacy that we leave behind. Because well after this brother passes away, his content will still be online and available for people to, to consume, to listen to, and to judge, and to take positions on, or even to be inspired by if that's the position that they take on certain issues. So our legacy is very important. Uh, it's very important to think about what kind of content we put out on a, a platform such as Facebook or on YouTube or any other social media or the things that we write and things like that, because those things survive us. Those things continue. They leave a mark even after we're gone. And that just makes me think about just like how precious life is and how we have to make the most out of the time that we have on this earth. We don't know how much time we have left. We don't know if we're gonna to live to see tomorrow. Uh, we don't know if we'll be around next year or the year after. So we have to make the most out of this life. You know, we have to um, show our love for our fellow human beings, you know, our brothers and sisters, our family, our loved ones. We cannot miss an opportunity to express how much we love the people in our life, how much we cherish these people in our lives. And we need to think about living our lives to the fullest because we are not promised tomorrow. We are not promised anything. So we need to live our lives to the fullest and realize our dreams. Instead of simply dreaming about things, we need to make these things manifest. And this, um, you know, this is a big wake up call. It's just a sad situation uh, that somebody that's relatively young would pass away, you know, uh, under these circumstances. Now, I don't know much information about like the cause of death or anything like that. Um, 
you know, I just know, you know, based on what I've seen on YouTube, a lot of people expressing, you know, um, their condolences for the, for the brother and his family. Um, it's just a messed up situation, you know, and despite, you know, obviously, despite the brother passing away, you know, obviously I stand behind my positions. I stand behind everything that I've said about the things that he has said and stuff like that. And that's just to be real. Like, um, you know, even though it's a, a tragic situation, I'm not one of these people to show fake love for somebody or anything like that. I, we did um, clash, you know, we did have our differences. But despite those differences, um, you know, I still recognize, you know, qualities that are respectable in the brother. Um, and I just, you know, have to acknowledge that. And we need to learn how to disagree. You know, this makes you just reflect on just like how we conduct debates here on YouTube and stuff like that. We can disagree without being um, uh, disagreeable or without being, uh, you know, over the top, without getting personal. And, you know, despite the disagreements that, you know, uh, David Carroll and myself may have had, it never um, went to the gutter in terms of exposing people or doxing people or anything like that. For the most, even though there was a few insults that went back and forth, there was never um, that kind of situation where people were being doxed or any of that kind of stuff. Um, but it's important that we maintain like some dignity in the debates that we have. Uh, we should try to refrain from you know, ad hominem attacks and name calling and stuff like that. Uh, we should. And that's something, a lesson to myself and a lesson to others here on this platform that we need to be more civilized in how we conduct ourselves here on YouTube, even if we have vigorous disagreements. Uh, so, you know, I just, again, want to send my condolences to the brother's family. You know, may the brother rest in peace. Uh, again, you know, I stand by my positions, but I, you know, recognize that this brother had an impact on YouTube. He was one of the voices here in the so-called black community here on YouTube or the black sector. Uh, so I want to hear from you, like, what do you think about um, David Carroll and his legacy or the things that he espoused and the positions that he took? So I'm going to take a second to look at your comments before I close out. And I also saw like a couple of insightful videos that I just want to mention. You know, I listened to uh, a Queasy 100's video um, and I thought that that was a, a powerful video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, he's just talking about, um, you know, his, his ties to David Carroll and just reflecting on um, life and everything. Um, yeah, this just is really heavy, man. It just makes you think like you never know when is your time. And that's why we have to seize the time and seize the moment, every moment that we have. We need to do the things that we have uh, set out to do. We need to stop procrastinating on the things that we want to accomplish in life. Uh, so let me see what you all are saying before I sign out. Um. Shout out to everyone in the chat. Shout out to DA. Shout out to John Pro. Uh, so John Pro said he knew something was wrong um, when he hadn't posted in a while. And um, it's been a while, like I was saying, it's been a while since I've been on YouTube. Like I post my videos every now and then, but I haven't been watching YouTube like I usually do. Um, you know, usually I watch YouTube videos every day, check out my feed of subscriptions and all that kind of stuff. And just check out even opposition every blue moon, like every blue moon. Like if I hear people talking about a David Carroll video, I would go to David Carroll's channel and check out what he's saying and stuff like that. Um, because like, regardless of like the actual points that he had made, you know, um, he laid out his arguments, you know, of course he, made strong arguments because otherwise people wouldn't even feel the need to try to rebut anything that he was saying. So, you know, he is a, a voice that will be missed here on YouTube. And I just think that 
in light of what has happened, like there should be a call for more uh, civility on YouTube. And I, I think that we've seen that. Like, um, I think we've seen more of that um, because I'm not, I, I haven't seen as much back and forth like with, you know, uh, certain people, but you do have a certain sector that's still on that foolishness and all that kind of stuff. But I think that we need to rise above that. And if we disagree with people, let's just argue the points instead of tearing down each other and flagging channels and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so that's just what I have to say about that. But I'm going to go through these comments before I sign out. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Yeah, so somebody had uh, something disrespectful to say. Um, you know, it's like we don't have to hate on somebody. If we disagree with somebody, we don't have to, like, you know, make disparaging remarks about it, about them, like, in this time. But I get it. Like, I get, like, the whole not being phony thing. I understand that. And that's not what I'm doing at all. Like, even in the debates that I had with him, um, you could tell that I did have some level of respect for him, even though like I vigorously opposed everything that he was talking about. Yeah, he did say bad things about black people without a doubt. I mean, um, definitely, he definitely did. You know, he referred to, you know, before he, like changed up his format and stuff like that. He did regularly, uh, you know, say belittling things about black people, you know, referring to black people as monkeys and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, making other despair, you know, calling people um, shines and all that kind of stuff and making other kinds of disparaging remarks. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't defend any of that stuff. You know, I take the same position that I've always taken, you know, with respect to his content. Um, but, you know, I still recognize that, you know, he was a person of influence here on YouTube. He did make, um, you know, uh, some arguments and he presented rational basis, you know, rational reasons behind the conclusions that he reached, even though I disagree with them. So let's see what else people are saying. Yeah, Covina man said I never liked him, but he had some valid points and i mean absolutely like anybody like even if you disagree with somebody they're gonna make some valid points from uh, you know every now and then like even a broken clock is right twice a day and he did make some valid points without a doubt like i'm not gonna say that everything that came out of his mouth was wrong or invalid or anything like that uh, he did make some valid points like he made valid points about the you know the deterioration of the black community and a lot of the problems in the black community, uh, you know, whether we're talking about violence or we're talking about, um, you know, out of uh, wedlock births and all that kind of stuff, those things that he would, some of those things that he complained about were valid. Uh, you know, his explanation as to why those problems exist, I may have disagreed with those explanations, but in terms of the problems, uh, you know, I recognize that he did make some valid points. And um, yeah, it's just unfortunate that, you know, that this brother passed away. You know, it's really sad. And I think that we need to, just as human beings have compassion for other human beings, even if we disagree with them, even if, you know, um, they are our opposition, we still need to be respectful as much as possible. You know, there are situations where somebody disrespects you or violates you, you have to deal with them. But I'm just saying going forward, we just need to have debates in a more civilized kind of way without the name calling, without the disrespect. 
And the fact that you have people in the comments section talking about how he made, he says terrible things about black people, that again goes to the point about legacy. We need to be careful and mindful of the legacy that we leave behind. Because like these things that we put out here on social media, they will continue to exist after we have passed away. People will still be able to view those videos or hear the audio of certain things, and it will still have a lasting impact and a lasting imprint on not only this small community here on YouTube, but on the world. So we need to be mindful of that. Uh, mindful of the type of legacy we are going to leave behind because you have a lot of YouTubers, for instance, whose whole legacy here is nothing but buffoonery and clownish type of behavior and stuff like that. And we need to ask ourselves, is this what we want to leave behind for the next generation? Is this what we want to leave behind for our kids? You know, this type of garbage, this, you know, that has no, that, uh, bears no fruit and, you know, is counterproductive. Um, so, yeah, I mean, those are serious things to think about, man. And just to think about, like, just like, man, it's just uh, something else to, to just reflect on the fact that this brother is no longer here. Um, so let's see what you all are saying. Um, so David Bowman mentioned that he hadn't been making videos for nearly three weeks. And yeah, he regularly would make videos like at least once a week or so. Yeah, I was thinking about that, John Pro, about his position. Like he was against religion. Like, you know, he was against uh, belief in God and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, that is something like... Um, because it's hard, like, it's hard to find words to say in that circumstances, you know, in that kind of circumstance, because you can't, you know, it's kind of awkward to say, um, you know, may God bless you with paradise or, um, you know, even a basic expression, rest in peace, if someone doesn't even, didn't even believe in God and stuff like that, uh, didn't even think that God exists or didn't even believe in heaven and hell and stuff like that. It's really an interest. That's an interesting point that you raise. Um, but despite like differences of religion and stuff like that, uh, like I don't think that that means that somebody's death shouldn't be mourned, um, even if it's the quote unquote ops, as people say, or um, somebody you disagree with. Um, so let's see what else everyone is saying. Yeah, I, I hear you, um, Hasib. I, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I mean, you know, he did um, he did make very disrespectful videos. I mean, he made some controversial material that can't be overlooked. And I'm not going to overlook it here. Like, he, he made, for instance, a video talking about why he supports the KKK. And again, this goes to what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? This man made videos disrespecting Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, a civil rights icon while praising the Klan. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so, I mean, that is very troubling. Um, he attacked Black History Month, you know, he made disrespectful comments about Black History Month saying we don't need Black History Month, et cetera, et cetera. Um, he's defended police to kill Black people. And this is the kind of stuff that people like a Tommy Sotomayor should really reflect on. Like when he passed, when Tommy Sotomayor passes away, like what it's going to be hard for people to find good things to say about a Tommy Sotomayor. They can say, well, he's hilarious and all that kind of stuff, but it's hard to come up with good things to say about someone who said, where's Darren Wilson when you need him? You know, who made all these, you know, disrespectful remarks about Trayvon Martin and countless other victims of um, police brutality. And who has, like, for instance, Tommy has made disrespectful remarks about the dead, like made mockery of the dead. So if somebody like Tommy passes away, it's, people are going to be hard pressed to try to find good things to say about him. 
And so I understand what some people are saying in the comments section. I, I hear what you're saying and I'm not going to, you know, ignore it or brush it off because you all have valid points. But, you know, just under the circumstances, I'm, you know, I'm just saying may the brother rest in peace. Um, you know, I send my condolences to um, his family again. So let's see what else you guys are saying. Yeah, so he had, you know, criticized Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, and, you know, black women, um, et cetera. And your, everybody's criticism is legitimate. So I'm not going to, like, say, you know, um, that you all are wrong or anything like that or get on here and be fake and phony like a lot of people do. Everybody loves you when you're dead. Like, all of a sudden, people come out to woodworks to talk about how much they love you and how great you were when these same people were attacking you. <laughs> So I'm not going to be one of those fake people. You know, I still stand behind every single video that I posted about him. You know, perhaps the the tone could have been different. Uh, perhaps, you know, there could have been less insults. But in terms of the actual substance of the debate, the actual points raised, I stand behind those points. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get on here just to show my respects to his family and to send my condolences to not only his family, but to the, his fans, the people that had great respect for him. So with that, you know, I'm going to say peace and blessings. Uh, I hope that you all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and a Happy Kwanzaa. Peace, everybody.